I'm sorry. <sighs> Lincoln freaking park. Yep. Burn it down. Burn it down. <laughs> uh, Sounds I'm, like a good solution to basically any problem. Just yeah, kidding. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> hey, yeah. so um, basically what we have on our $75 tier is that you can have, I'm sorry, not your $75 tier, your $15 tier is that you can have a um, cause of your choice put out there. And so Peter picked that we would talk about local food banks and how right now, because people are short on work or are, are completely fired, they're reaching out to their local food banks to get food, but that the local food banks are running low on food because there's so much need more than what we've had in a long time. So he was just encouraged. He just wants to encourage the village and everyone else to donate stuff to your local food bank so that way people in your neighborhood and in your community are able to still. So I thought that that was a really good point that I actually hadn't thought of. Um, so I thought that was really cool of him to bring that up. It's mind boggling to me. You, you tell a person anything you want. Yeah, it could be your own Etsy shop. It could be your uh, um, your YouTube channel. Promote, it could promote be, it anything, matter. anything you want promoted. We're going to promote it unless it's something for abortion. You guys know that. But um, other than that, we're pretty much open to anything and yeah. everything. And this is what he chooses to promote. I know. Um, I've said it. I've said it over and over again. We've got the best community in on on YouTube. Period. No one's Period. even close. Um, we we helped it about raise about two thousand dollars for the big homie um, Alan's uh, uh, work with the COVID nineteen tragedy that happened at his place of work. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm just I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. But on a on a serious note, especially business wise, if you're in a fifteen dollar tier, twenty dollar tier, and there is a cause you want us to promote, um, a band, a website, anything, even if you need a job, we could say, hey, so and so needs a job in X area. I mean, it's really <laughs> open to anything. It's an underutilized thing that I really, you know, look, people reach out to us and they and they you know. They say, hey, you know, we'd like you to advertise X, Y, and Z thing on our on your channel. And, you know, I usually quote them some horrible price, like three, four hundred dollars or something like that. Um, but if you're in the crew and yeah, on Patreon, 15 bucks, 99% uh, of you aren't cashing in on that. And so some of this is I want you to cash in on it. The other one is, okay, what else can we do for you? If you're at that tier, yeah, what else? Yeah, you can have like an anniversary announced. You can have a birthday announced. You can have a special message to somebody put out there. Yeah. Um, really, sky's the limit, like he said, as long as it's not about abortion. We also you know? we also have a website coming up. We're about 75% of the way done. So, so we said that at our discretion, we would um, advertise your cause. If you have a preference of how you want it advertised, you're welcome to put that out there for us. Um, but you know, mostly we've been able to do whatever people wanted. So yeah. So uh, well, this is Jay Disparated shirts. I mean, they're not, they're not cut like this. I cut my own, but these are the ones. And um, what did it say on the back? These were for all the times you said you'd be there. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a good shirt. So I like the shirt. I like the shirt. This, however, is Lincoln Park. Burn it down for time and topical political commentary. You can hit us up in Middle America with Vin and Sorry. Uh, let's do it. Go.
little bit confused actually on the lyrics. Really? Yeah. I think I think the because rap usually I think the rap say, part I think the rap part uh, pretty much told the story. But go ahead, what were you saying? Because usually people say like you know like you're you're tearing it down or you're burning it down, so that way for the purpose of building it back up again. Who says that? Well, maybe I'm thinking. I've never of, heard that before. Maybe I'm thinking of Jeremiah. I don't know. Like yeah. You tear down, you repair, like or like the the okay the soldiers, they tear you down and build you up the way they want you. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I hear you, and I think there's some of that. But this is not you saying. You told that. me yes, you held me high, and I believe when you told that lie. Mm -hmm. I played soldier, you played king, and struck me down when I kissed the ring. I think it's talking about just you know the human nature thing where you build somebody up, yeah. and then you you tear them down. And you, you, you try to destroy the thing that another person has built, but at the same time you admire them, you know. And that's why he says, "You held me high." Yeah. And I believe when you told that lie. Oh God. Which okay. is why I always say, is that, you know, you can't. Being a celebrity is is a is a very interesting connection. You can't ride on the praises without crashing on the negativity. Well, yeah. I mean, look, you know, like. The term celebrity means that you're a celebrated person. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. You're celebrated. People celebrate you. Mm -hmm. uh, but the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, people are the most important person to most people is themselves. Those are facts. Those mm -hmm. are big facts. And so, within the human... That's why the Bible says, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Correct. Well, yeah, God knows. God's like, you know what? How about you love your neighbor like you love yourself? Because hmm? we know you love yourself. But... You know, it, we're watching a Jordan documentary. Everything is going good for him. He's winning all these titles. And then these books come out. Oh, Jordan's a gambler. He's a chronic gambler, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, <laughs> you know, he lost 57K in a gambling thing on the jig. But he's got, the guy's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. The guy was like, you know, $10,000 for Michael Jordan is $10 for you. It's not. It's like 11 cents for you. You know what I mean? So, but they just had to find something. And, oh, he's mean to people. Like, what successful person isn't mean to people? <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I haven't met many very nice, yeah. successful people in competitive sports. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a competitive sport. You're, the whole goal is to be... So, yeah. so, you had this rise of Michael Jordan. Oh, my God, he's gone in tennis shoes, blah, 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 blah. And then, oh, he's, he's gambling and people just... Actually, huh? he's God in Jordan's. Actually. Yeah, but that's... There's a famous quote from um, Larry Bird. He said he's God in tennis shoes. <laughs> And, and you know, like there was a clip yesterday where uh, where the guy was asking for tickets, and the the the, um, uh, the guy was like, "Well, I was praying to God that I'd get these tickets." And Jordan goes, "Well, you met him," and and then Jordan looked at the camera. He goes, "Don't publish that. Don't publish that. Don't." That's publish what that. I was saying. I didn't hear that. Piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said you met him, and so he's don't publish that. Don't publish that. And it was such a crazy contrast to me because I was like, on the one hand. He does have a massive ego, mm -hmm. like massive, like his code name, there's an article on ESPN, his code name, everybody in his crew has code names, his code name is Yahweh, that's his code name, and it's like, so look, it's impossible, uh, obviously for me as a Christian, I'm going to say, unless you have a biblical worldview, but it's impossible to be literally worshipped by millions of people all across the planet. And it not affect you. And it not get into your head. Yeah. But simultaneously, um, look, man, when you're like at the apex of that and people saying all that stuff to you, mm -hmm. people really do not understand. Mm -hmm. People ain't dying for you, bro. <laughs> you think of people like you like that? <laughs> <laughs> that's why, that's why, that's one of the reasons I've never been afraid to say controversial stuff on this channel. Mm -hmm. It's because it, it, it's not that I don't care about how people feel about me or you or whatever. It's mm -hmm. not that. It's just that I know that if I imprison myself to only say what people are going to like, it doesn't matter anyway. They're going to turn on you eventually. Mm -hmm. So you might as well be who you actually are. Yeah, no, and I mean, I, I hear you. I completely agree. So that when, you know, and not everybody's going to turn on you. you. You know, Jordan's had, you know, Charles Oakley and, and like, he's had friends. So everybody is not going to turn on you. Yeah. You can have genuine friendships and relationships that are going to be long lasting and great and all that. And somebody calling you on your bullshit is not them turning on you either. Mm-hmm. 
But there are, but the vast majority of human beings love to build people up and then tear them down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because obviously from my perspective, it's because we are designed to worship. Yeah. We're designed to yeah. worship, so we're gonna. But we want to worship everything other than the true God. So mm -hmm. we're gonna create idols to worship, and then when those idols fail us, as they all inevitably will do, then we're gonna crucify them. Um, so you know, I, I just think that it's one of those things. Like, and obviously that's why the whole Jesus paradigm has is, is always been so fascinating to me because mm -hmm. he's the ultimate example of. Hey, let's, you know, Jesus was not always negative. And, and I, I think that if you really, like, looked at Jesus' life, some of it would be mysterious. Like, how in the world does a guy like this get crucified? You know, when you look at... Um, well, I used to think that people, when I was a how kid. How many people he helped. Because, right. That's what I used to think. I used to think, how in the world did this happen? And the only way that I thought that it could happen was because, like, the devil, like, was whispering in everybody's ear in the crowd and the people like just started saying what they heard in their ear like right but so that's you know as a child i thought yeah i mean he went around healing people raising people from the dead like feeding people like how come how can people turn on him like this yeah but then when i see the reaction of the religious leaders and how he heavily heavily influenced the people and that he got such a quick and large following I think that it made the leaders and stuff very jealous and people you know how people are even if you know I think that they liked it talk it, like in the Bible it talks about them liking you know they like to pray out loud and stuff and like get you know get the approval of the people or they like the long loud tassels or whatever on their on their clothes and you know they liked all of that attention and then you have here comes you know this humble figure that walks in and he well I can understand why they right. hate him right. but it wasn't the Pharisees that got Jesus crucified it was the mob it was regular people that were calling calling for that. They got swayed by the Pharisees, but it was right. regular people. That well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that they got swayed by the Pharisees. But the, the question is, but why? how did they even get swayed in the first place? That's the issue. That's my thing. It's yeah. like you got these people who are nasty religious hypocrites who would be the right wing evangelicals of the day. Then you got this other guy who gave you your dignity back and, and spoke for you against them in public. How could you turn on him like mm -hmm. that? And I, I and. Like Maybe I said, it had something to do with Barabbas and them wanting, they didn't necessarily want somebody that was humble and that was going to do it. They wanted somebody that was going to overthrow the Romans. Well, yeah, I, I, I just think it's human nature. You know, the, 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 the time that I really got sick of it was Justin Bieber. So Justin mm -hmm. Bieber is this kid, yeah. YouTube, blah, blah, blah. And he was this giant sensation. And then he started having drug problems and everybody was like posting something about him every day and mocking him. And I just put on Facebook, I'm like... A year ago, this kid was a sensation. Now he might kill himself with a, a OD, and everybody's making fun of him. That's Why? Sad. And he's Why? a kid. And, well, he was a twenty-something at the time when he really got it. But it, it's like all these, you know. And then you look at a guy like Cobain, and it's like, see, here's the thing: is a guy like Cobain gets frozen in time, so he he was still climbing up in his apex, mm -hmm. so he wasn't able to experience that thing where everybody would turn on him. So he's able to blow himself away and like stay frozen. Mm -hmm. in that in that space yeah and in it's kind of like the only way you can remain in that space is if you if you die young and in some horrible tragic way then people will be like oh, okay like biggie tupac is the same thing you know um so it, it's michael jackson and you know there, there's there's other issues with michael jackson i understand that but even before that stuff was happening people were turning on him it's just we want to have somebody to worship, and we want to have somebody to crucify. Well, they were saying on that documentary, the Jordan one, um, that the media eats up the idea of somebody rising to the top and then them crashing. Like, well, yeah. they, they love it. Well, the media loves it because it generates revenue for them. If it wasn't, they didn't if it just wasn't, say the media, though. It, it well, seemed uh, like it was just... That's It's human nature. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, like... The reason that the media loves it is, is because, because it lines it. their pockets. Yeah. And the reason it lines their pockets is because we're constantly in this cycle of worship and crucifixion of of, of, mm -hmm. of icons. Yeah. This is one of the very esoteric reasons that I believe that the Christian gospel is the truth. Is mm -hmm. because you you find all of these principles lived out in the life of Jesus. <coughs> 
of uh, being worshipped and crucified and, and all that. And oddly enough, the, the Christian gospel states that there's only one person that should be worshipped and crucified simultaneously, right? And, and, then, and then there's a postscript, which is the resurrection. Right? Yeah. He comes back and, and overcomes all that, whereas the other ones don't. They, mm -hmm. they, they survive through it or they make it through it and they have a, you know, mm -hmm. a, 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 a loyal group of fans. But it's really, it's really, really uh, frustrating. I, I get frustrated when I see it with other people. I don't get frustrated when it happens to me. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me when it happens to me. But I do get frustrated when I see it with other people. The reason I think is because, the reason it doesn't bother me is because I have a full expectation of it. And I never bought any of that. Mm -hmm. I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people, like, I could tell sometimes when people are like buying it. Whether it's in a small or the, the big stage, mm -hmm. like, I could tell, like, oh, this guy buy it. Like, he really believes these people like it. He really believes they love him. Hey, these people don't love you, bro. These people barely love themselves. What do you mean they love you? They don't even know what's your middle name. They don't even know your middle name. You really think they love you. I feel bad for you. But, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, man. So I, I think that that's, you know, you told me that you held me high, and I believe when you told that lie. I just think it's a painful thing when people figure that out. And I was, I was blessed to be able to figure that out very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. But that's also because I didn't have, you know, I did a lot of observing growing up because I was always a new kid because we moved around so much. So I was able to observe people a lot and, and, and mm -hmm. connect things together. Um, but again, that, that doesn't, this is not like a cynical view of human beings. I, I think this is like, this is how you, you look at, you know, fame and, and why are there famous people in the first place? That's mm -hmm. another question. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting question. Like, why are they? I, I remember. Yeah, I but was, I feel like the reason there's famous people is because there's stuff that we like and we want to see more of it. Yeah, but you're good at that. And, and like I said, a person might say, you like, on your back. "Oh, you're overanalyzing." But we have a show called American Idol. Mm -hmm. I mean, an idol is something that is worshipped. So mm -hmm. this, this is not like it doesn't take you very far to get there. But I, I was, I remember we we're driving down the street or something, and I was like. You know, if, if Head was walking down the street with all the long dreads and the long mm, jacket, yeah, yeah. like, he would fit right in on that corner, yeah. and, and people would just drive by and not know who, like, in some alternate universe, yeah. he's there and he's not important. Right, right. But now, because he, he, he's very, very skilled at people a particular instrument. the highway to chase yeah, him. Yeah, that whole situation where he was talking about that dude was yeah. chasing him, and, like, yeah. he turned into the gas station, the dude turned into the gas station, was following him, like... Long. That's crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, what is going on? So, like, you know, fame is a very interesting thing. And so it's like, why why are people famous? And what does that mean? And, and uh, you know, uh, how does that, like, you got a guy like John Gotti, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he, you know, I'm into the mobs and stuff right now. Like, mm -hmm. How the hell did he become a cultural... I, this guy is a murderer. He's like a murderer, a thief. He extorted people. He was yeah. a horrible individual. Um, guy, you know, accidentally kills his son. It was his son's fault, you know, with the, the thing. And, and the, then, you know, God, he goes and has the guy tortured and dismembered and all like it to, to appease his wife. Like, horrible guy. But massively, and, and you know, oddly enough, very um, famous in black culture. Like, in the late 90s, early 2000s, pretty much every rapper was trying to present themselves as mafia people. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, was, I didn't know that. John. Oh, yeah. Puffy's group was called Goodfellas, um, which is a mafia movie. Uh, Biggie, Jay-Z, and this other girl had this group called The Commission, which The Commission is just all the five mob bosses when they get together. That's called hmm. The Commission. Okay. And Biggie, you know, in The Commission, you ask for permission to hit him, which is literally the part that's... that's like, So, like, from the late 90s, early 2000s, every rapper was saying that they were... Mo you know, biggest crew was called Junior Mafia. Like, yeah. and, like a pop, they were all doing it. So it's like, why are people famous? Like this That's is it's 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 a it's a crazy it's a crazy thing, you know. And and then you got people that are famous and for good reasons, and people are famous for bad reasons. But it just goes to to me, it just goes to show that we instead of saying like we were designed to worship, you might not want to hear that because most of us are atheists. But if you were to say we let's say this way, all of us have an inherent desire to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Can we say that? 
people want to be people want something that's bigger than themselves and they want something that that's that's massive and that 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 is out of the ordinary mm -hmm. and a lot of times you can you can locate all that into a person mm -hmm. but then the ego comes in and says well how come I can't be like that and that's when you start wanting to crucify your your Messiah mm -hmm. and uh, so that's why you know that whole that whole aspect of human nature is just so fascinating to me and, and I knew it was gonna happen in the Jordan thing but you know at the time I wasn't a big Jordan fan I was oh, okay. I was a uh, we were, in, we were in Florida at the time, so Orlando Magic was the, the team. They were the young guys. You had Penny Hardaway, who, in my opinion, was just as good as Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit better, because he would pass more. Um, you had Shaq, Dennis Scott, Nick Anderson, Brian Shaw. You had all these guys, and they were the new team. It was Florida. So I didn't really care about Jordan. So okay. I didn't, I didn't like... Oh, wow. You know, when he, and that was around the time he, re he retired. Like, I didn't care, mm -hmm. you know, if he were. I was like, oh, okay, good for him, whatever. I didn't care if he retired, but... So I didn't know the backstory, and then when I was looking at the uh, the uh, documentary, the documentary, man, jeez, no. it's like, and to me, it's like, <laughs> part of me is confused. Like, who cares? I don't care if I was gambling and people had stuff to say. Like, okay, uh, yeah, you don't like the fact that I'm gambling? Who cares? He just seemed like really, but he's a really sensitive dude. It just seems he's a really sensitive guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah I thought the same thing about that. Like. I think, sometimes I think that you give people the amount of power that they have over you. Yeah. So if you're acting all concerned about it and giving all these explanations and all yeah. this, like the, the time when he like, he didn't have that great of a game, but he had stayed like out late. Like I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't have even given them the time of day to even answer those questions. Like I done. what he does on his spare time is his business. Like what does that have to do with you? Yeah. Like. I just think it's, cr I just thought that was crazy. But like, see, that's the other thing is when you ingest all of that adulation and worship, you don't want to lose it. Yeah. See, that's the other side of it is because it feels good. You don't want to lose it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there, there's that too. And, and obviously there's only one Michael Jordan. There'll never be another one. There'll never be another Justin Bieber and all that. But I, I think... You know, like even at the micro level, I've I've tried to make sure that the kids understand that if you're doing something, don't do it for my for my adulation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do it because you think it's the right thing to do, or you've you've come mm -hmm. to that conclusion yourself. And you know, <laughs> I was arguing with Dorian or something. I'm like, why do you care? What do you care what I think? Just freaking. And then somebody was like, well, you're his dad. Yeah, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and I see where that person's coming from. It's just, yeah. it's important that he has his own, you know, solid understanding of what he believes is right and what he believes is wrong, coming from his own, you know, his, partially from his own self, but it's also from, you know, the teaching. But you don't want somebody that's so dependent on, on somebody else's opinion that it sways them all well, over the place well, because then it's not actually him making a decision. It's just him trying to appease you. And it really starts at home. Like at the Jordan mm -hmm. documentary, the first thing he talked about was his dad and how his. His brother had the affection of his dad, and mm -hmm. he wanted that, and his brother got it through sports, and so he was right. trying to do that through right. sports. So it's there. It mm -hmm. starts at the home. And so, you know, that was pretty interesting. And then you think to yourself, well, would he have been Jordan if he was a completely secure person? Would he be as petty and competitive no. and all the rest of it? I mean... <laughs> I'd say no way. Who knows? Who There's knows? no way. Uh, sonically, the, the, the song was, like, completely generic to me. I agree. I did like like when they did the kind of rapping part of it, but I don't think that it was anything like... Sonically, know, it was terrible. I think it was like one chord throughout the whole thing. Yeah, with a couple it was synth. pretty basic in there. Yeah, I thought the uh, same thing. I wasn't really a fan, but, but this is... And just, I think maybe the reason why I liked the rapping was because it gave it some variation. Well, it just goes variation. to show how much Chester was carrying this band. Not to say that... But I think... Chester was so powerful vocally that he could turn something that's very, very plain into something that's like makes makes the album. I mean, I'm, I'm a just little not bit a confused. fan. I'm not a fan of the instrumentation. Okay, I'm Sorry. just confused at how this song got to be so popular because obviously we've seen it had like, you know, I I, I can't well, remember how Lincoln, many. Lincoln. Lincoln. Well, I, I think that we've been listening to over 1,500 songs. All, that are all over the place from black metal million from views. black metal to prog metal to whatever so we've we've listened to so many 
Um, on the official video. Yeah, no, I hear you what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, how is it that this song that, that really well, doesn't a, have, good, like... It's a good pop song. Can a lot of people relate to this sort of experience? It oh, seems sure. like... So, you think lots of people feel like they got built up and... I think every every kid can relate to this with their parents. I mean, we okay. were just having that drive. We were just having that conversation on the drive. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody can relate to this in, in, in little to big... You know the greats, yeah. but I, I just think Chester's vocal is a. I think any other singer other than Chester on this song, and it, and it, it is not as popular as it, as it as it is. But I yeah. just think that he. I'm not saying he carried the band because the band is still wor working without Chester. I'm just saying that. You know, it's like Aaron Rodgers. Like you know, you. They call him like the deodorant of the team because you know you can make a mistake here and there, he'll fix it. And I just think that, you know, this one, they kind of mailed it in musically with the instruments, mm -hmm. but that Chester is such a strong vocal presence that he's able to carry the song. But, mm -hmm. um, sonically... Yeah, I mean, I hear, I, I'm probably like a... It didn't really do much for me. Very, very forgettable. I, I, I've forgotten okay. all the chords <laughs> and the progressions. Yeah, I think it was like a 6.7 for me. It wasn't even really that. Solid, solid 7. Solid 7. Vin out. Sorry out. Down.